I'm on my travels again. Archie, Maisie, my two Westies and myself heading out to sunny Tyree. I hope to uh, share my experiences for the week with you there. But of course, first port of call has to be the Isle of Call. So here we are arriving at the Isle of Call. Isle of Call is a lovely wee island, very similar to Tyree. It's uh, about 13 miles long, 5 miles wide, sandy beaches, loads of history. Seemingly going back to the Greek era, but you certainly get lots of history going back to the 6th century or so. So, here we are on the sunny island of Tyree. I'm thoroughly looking forward to another week on the island. I'm going to start exploring a lot of the places that I've not yet seen, and uh, a couple of repeat visits places that I think that you would like to see. So, this is Skarnish. It's the main village in uh, Tyree. The harbour here, built in 1771. And in the background here, we've got the Skarnish Hotel. Been closed for a wee while. But it's opening under new management and it's been spruced up so I'd recommend you go there as well as going to the lodge which I'll show you later. So that was us paying a visit to the town of Skarnish. Now we're going to nip over to Balafetrish and see the Ringing Stone. So here we are at my first stop, day one in my tour of Tyree. And the first beach I've decided to stop at is Balafetrish. And the reason I came here first is because there's somewhere I've never been before, and it's the Ringing Stones. Well, the first hurdle of the day is that I've uh, gone through the gate there, and there is no marker with which to go left or right to find the Ringing Stones. So I'm taking a guess that I'm just going to follow the coastline, and hopefully I'll stumble upon the first marker. But you know, it's no great hardship not being able to find the path when you've got a beach like this. This is the top end of Balafetrish beach. This beach is uh, far longer and actually if you go beyond these rocks there, uh, just behind me, there's another longer bit right along the coastline. But this bit's lovely. Now you'll see in the background these rocks and the sort of multicoloured layers in them. These rocks are over 3,000 years old. You find them all along the Inner Hebrides. And some of this rock's so hard that it's practically impossible to do anything with. The Skerivore Lighthouse, and I'll take you to that museum another uh, time, tomorrow probably, has uh, a good story about how they could only manage to do the base using this Lewisian stone because it was so hard and then they had to go and import stone from all that was a bit softer to cut otherwise the lighthouse was going to take years to build but I think it's fascinating Now, even the locals will struggle to find the ringing stone I believe In a nutshell, when you leave the car park you turn right, you go through five gates and then you'll see this stone this is a famous ringing stone that everybody's uh, looking for in Tyree and we found it and I think it was well worth it. It's quite a unique stone this. It's referred to as an erratic stone. So really, this stone shouldn't be in Tyree at all. It's a much softer stone than that, that Lewisian Nice, uh, the hard rock that is native to the island. And they reckon this bit of stone came from the Isle of Rum. Of course, one of the things we have to do is actually prove that it is indeed the Ringing Stone. So listen up. Right, time to go home now. I want to go and see the sunset at Cornabeg. So here we are at uh, Cornabeg Beach on the west side of the island. See the sunset. It's absolutely beautiful. Don't know if you'll quite catch it in this uh, in this light, but yeah, this is the beach near my house. Pups love it here. It's a lovely place to come in the morning 
and in the evening. Well, with sunsets like that, I can go to my bed and go to sleep quite happy now. Right, see you all in the morning. Um, hi, I'm Eowyn. Um, I work here at Black House Water Sports, my sister's um, surf school. Um, yeah, I've been living abroad for the last couple of years and um, with the current pandemic going on I found myself back up in Tyree, it's my family home. Um, so yeah, and I've been working been up here for the last couple of months and we only just opened up. So it's been a it's been a nice couple of days, lots of good weather. Yeah, hope it continues. So this is us at Balavulan Beach and it's one of the most popular beaches here. Uh, lovely wee beach, some rocks, nice expansive soft sand and the surf's fantastic at times. All depends on which way the wind's coming in. As you heard for A1, it's very busy with the tourists using the surf school. There's another surf school, I'll tell you about them in the next B section. But uh, yeah, what a fantastic beach this is. Long golden sands, miles for the dogs to run about in, and a wee bit of character. I'm Jane and I live on Tyree and this is Bella Villain Beach. It's a great beach to come. Why is it a good beach to come, Zach? The bay board. So that was Bella Villain Beach and now we're on our way to the Maze, which is just along this road here. Now, it is quite a, a journey, quite a walk, but if the weather's good, it's a fabulous walk, so I thoroughly recommend you do that. In that direction, it was Bella Villain. We're heading in that direction towards the maze, but on the way, about halfway, there is a site that you need to stop and see. Kilkenneth, a wee chapel that dates back to the Middle Ages, and it's in that field over there. Now, there's not a lot to see, I've been there before, it's a wee ruin, but we'll pop over the fence and have a wee look. So this is us at Green Hill and the beauty of Green Hill and parking here is that you've got a choice of two beaches. Just beyond this is a rocky beach but if you want to get to the good beach, the maze, you have to turn right and cross over this wee river here and go around the corner. So we've got Kenavara in the distance there and uh, we'll go and pay that a wee visit tomorrow or the next day. Now. Why is this called the maze? Well, I believe it's got something to do with all these sporadic rock formations and the sand that weaves in and out between the uh, the rocks. This is not the best place to surf, but as you can see in the distance where we're going next, wonderful long flat sand dunes. Best place to surf when the wind's in the right direction here. When you reach this bit here, at the uh, what is seemingly a big wall of rocks, you'll see that just behind me there's a, a rise. If you go up that rise, it'll take you beyond the rocks and along to the big long sandy beach that you'll have a great time at. Or if you want to go back to the car, you turn back towards the car, but you go through the dunes, and the dogs absolutely love the dunes. Right, time to jump in the car and head over to Balafool Beach now. So this is us on uh, Balafool Beach. It's a beautiful beach, about a mile long, long golden sands. It's uh, absolutely stunning. Hi, my name's Alison. I'm from Bosel and I come to Tyree on holiday and I love it because it's beautiful beaches. Now, fortunately, I met a couple of locals who were really nice and they're telling me all about the history of this wee bit and how exactly to find this chapel. And you just have to keep going past the beach 
onwards and upwards and uh, you'll find a, a rise in the rock in front of us and it should just be beyond that. And when we find the, the wee ruin of St Patrick's Temple, we, uh, we'll learn that it's dedicated to St Patrick by St Comgill, who came over to uh, Scotland with St Columba in the 6th century. To the chapel, keep going over the hills, and we're looking for a well now. And in these rocks just in front of us, there's also a rock formation that's referred to as the organ pipes. You'll find that the path's nice and easy to follow, although there's a couple of bits where a stout pair of shoes would be quite good to have with you. It's a wee bit boggy in parts, but yeah, it's a nice gentle climb to the top. But the uh, keep away from the rocks at the organ pipes, that's treacherous. Just past the organ pipes, keep going up the hill, which is actually called Kenavara, and uh, you'll get some great views. At the top of Kenabara you'll find a cairn, quite a recent uh, collection of stones it looks like. But uh, when you get there, look further over to the north of the island and you'll see Sandig Beach. And then just past that, where we were earlier, when we were at the maze. So here's me and my pups, sitting on top of the hill. Great time. However, do you know, it's nearly six o'clock, that's about a five or a six mile eh, round trip, I think, perhaps a wee bit more, so it's maybe time to go and get my tea. That was our walk up Kenavara, it was a fair hike, then back along the lovely Balafail beach, and I was really glad to bump into Neil and his family, and thanks very much to Alison for doing that wee, that wee piece for us. Alison seems a brilliant girl. She's at Strathclyde doing pharmacy and I wish her all the best. So, once you leave Balafell and you get back to the main road, turn right and then you can head towards the golf ball. Just keep going for about half a mile, you'll get a farm gate, I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, just walk up the hill and you'll get some fabulous views. So this is the entrance to the golf ball. And you have to park here, you can't take your car up. But if you do, just park on the other side of the gate, make sure that the farmer can get in and just follow the path. Right, so this is about halfway up. Get a nice view down to Balafell again. And we can just see the top of the golf ball now. And we're not too far to go. So here we've arrived at the golf ball. So, what is a golf ball? It's a radar station. It's used by the military to check to see what's coming towards Britain. I think it's the last radar station between here and overlooking the Atlantic. 24 metres tall, built in 1985 and made in Norwegian hexagonal glass. Fascinating place. But you know, we're here to walk the dogs and the view from the other side of that golf ball is far more fabulous. Archie. So here we're on the other side of the golf ball, as you can probably hear, it's very windy, but this is the highest point in the island. That's us overlooking Balafell Beach in Kenavara, where we were yesterday. Now, you'll be tempted to walk right round the golf ball from where I just showed you a minute ago and come back out on that side there. Eh, my advice is don't, it's all bog to the far side there and right down that fence line. If you've got hiking boots, that's fine, but if you're an average tourist, you'll absolutely get sodden, even in summer. So instead, what you want to do is go back out the gate, down to the farm path, and across onto the other side of the island from there. Right, so here we are on the other side of the island, having gone up the farmer's field that I told you about, and in the distance there you see Crossopol Beach. That's my favourite beach, actually. Uh, for walking the dogs. You see the airport slightly to the left of that. Ballamartin's just over that hill and if you go through Ballamartin towards Hynish, which you see now, you're heading towards Hynish itself on the left hand side. You've got back more or the Dutchman's Cap Island and beyond that mull in the distance. 
and there we see the old village of Hynish itself where the lighthouse keeper stayed providing services to the Skerryvore lighthouse and we're going to go and see that shortly and then if we pan right around you'll see Isla in the distance so that's the wee trip to the golf ball over I hope you enjoyed that I hope you learned a wee bit about what you can see from up here it's a fabulous trip now it's time to go down and see Hynish this uh, dock's quite interesting, it fills up with sand Alan Stevenson designed a, a flushing system so a million gallons of water comes down there and sweeps it all away that's the watchtower where the lighthouse keepers would communicate with base and the cottages where the family stayed well, if, I, um, if I live here on Terry, I would probably say my favourite thing about Terry is that it's such a small such a small island which is got so many attractions the wind surfing community the or just wind wind sports in general come to Terry we get fantastic weather beautiful white beaches nobody on them and fantastic wind surfing never rains here and there's no midges it's brilliant So it's always great to meet the locals and that was Peter and Olav there giving us a wee account of why they like staying in Tyree. Now, I'm here at the Hynish uh, Visitor Centre. It's closed because of lockdown, but this is always my first port of call. Anytime I introduce someone to the island, this is the first place I bring them. It's absolutely fascinating. We're standing in Hynish. They started to build this place in 1837 and the whole village was built specifically so that they could take materials and men out to build the Scary Vore Lighthouse which is ten and a half miles in the opposite direction and what a feat that was built by Stevenson so uh, a wee bit of a history lesson Today we uh, bumped into Iwan at the Black House Surf School this is the Wild Diamond Surf School and it's at Corner Beg and that's Loch Vaspo this near side's really shallow, in fact that's where the kids learn to swim. On the right hand side there's a bird sanctuary if you're into bird watching and if you go further out then Wild Diamond will show you how to uh, windsurf. Of course both Black House and uh, Wild Diamond they do surf lessons in all the beaches along uh, the coast of the island so no matter which direction the wind's in you'll be able to get lessons somewhere because the wind will be creating surf fabulous place for water sports so I recommend both companies to you so this is the old mill built in 1802 to grind the corn for the whole island and next to it the mill house hostel now I've met quite a few people that have been uh, staying in the mill house they go to the beach at Cornerbeg and tell me it's a great place to book into so go for it I mentioned earlier that we'd uh, taken it down to Lodge Hotel for uh, a wee meal and that sits on Got Bay. Got Bay is the big beach right next to the ferry and uh, you'll get a good meal there. I'm Anya and I live on Tyree and I live here because I mean just check out these beaches and this absolutely beautiful scene that I'm looking at right now. So after you've driven through Skarnish probably stopped at the co-op and picked up your provisions keep going for about a mile mile and a half and you'll see the airport on your right and you'll see these World War II huts on your left and you want to drive into this bit here because you're going to go to my favourite beach so this is Crossapo, my favourite beach the one that I take the dogs to as my first port of call every time I get off the ferry it's really long golden sands and very quiet, much quieter than the other beaches eh, for dog walking so I recommend this one but don't too many of you come along here so here we are at Tyree Airport it's right in the middle of the, the island flights coming in for Glasgow every day eh, you got a flight going into Oban once a week so very easy to get here from Glasgow in particular However, 
I'm not getting a plane home. It's uh, time to go for the ferry and make my way back to sunny Oban.